35 years old. I've struggled with addiction since I was 19, but a darkness started to form in me before that. My parents separated when I was 16, which was hard, but I was okay. But two weeks later, my dad moved a new woman into our house, and she changed our worlds in the worst possible way. She was a drug addict and a pathological liar. She told us that she was recovering from leukemia, which was a lie, and that she had a dying grandson, which was also a lie. This was all just to get my father and I to feel sorry for her and for her family and for my father to give them endless amounts of money. Her insanity drove my dad to drink extremely heavily and she would hurt herself and call me at all hours of the day or night saying that he was beating her and that he was gonna kill her. She was the one actually beating herself and to make it look like he was doing it. As a young man, I didn't know this type of evil even exist, existed or was capable by a human. So I believed it. She also called the cops on him so many times about him abusing her, which he never did, that he refused to get arrested and went on the run from the police for over a year. All charges against him were eventually dropped by the courts, but it ruined my father's reputation nonetheless. At this time, I also suffered a severe back injury from snowboarding when I was 19. It wasn't from a fall or anything, just an overuse injury of muscles that, that the doctor said would go away very quickly because I was young and healthy. This led me to using painkillers and my now ex-stepmother gave me a pill crusher and encouraged me to start to start snorting them so that they'd work better and I got even more addicted. Um, also around this time, one of my closest friends, who you can see right there behind me, uh, Vladdy, uh, he passed away and, and it led me down a whole dark path. At one point I was snorting roughly 200 milligrams of hydromorphone or dilaudid or whatever I could get my hands on. Uh, a normal person in pain takes on average between one and four milligrams depending on their pain. I was snorting 50 to 60 milligrams three to four times a day. After being so close to death and overdosing so many times, <clears throat> my friend stepped in and, had, and held a real life intervention for me. Uh, and it saved me. I went to rehab outside of Montreal for 30 days and came back a new person, but the scars were still there. I did well for, sev I did well for several years, but I still had debilitating back problems. I had two surgeries in Halifax, countless nerve blocks and cortisone injections, and they finally told me, told me that there was nothing they could do for me. When I was 28, I found out about a surgeon in Germany who does artificial disc replacement and I took the risk and went there and had two titanium discs, discs put in my back. This led me to a brand new life. Uh, I went back to school, I was traveling, I drove across Canada four times by myself and most importantly, it gave me hope for a new life but I still felt empty after a few years. So I turned to alcohol over the last couple of years and became extremely healthy once again. Um, sadly, sorry. Um, my father passed away on January 26th of this year. So today is four, four months since he died. Um, he had been a heavy, heavy drinker for over 50 years. He was living, living in Oxford now, just close to New Brunswick, for the last few years. And when I couldn't get a hold of him for, a few, for two days, because he would always get back to me, even if he was on a bender, I decided to just drive down there to make sure he was okay. While I was passing Truro, I got a call from an unknown number. <coughs> Excuse me. And it was the police telling me 
that my father was found dead. His neighbor also couldn't get a hold of him, and so he was the one who went to the house and found my father dead at the bottom of the stairs. He fell down and died of blunt force trauma to the head. Had I left my house one hour earlier, it would have been me who found him, and it destroyed me. We had our problems, but he was also my best friend. And I admired him more than I can ever put into words. I went on a crazy, crazy bender for about two weeks after his death and ended up in, in the hospital for five days with pancreatitis and undiagnosed type 2 diabetes. I thought it was going to be the end of me. It was the start. I thought it was going to be the end of me, but it was the start of a new me. Since then, something in me snapped, and despite having the most broken heart, I decided to fight and make my dad proud. I started exercising again, drank very little alcohol, I've lost about 30 pounds, and have been so healthy that I don't even think I have diabetes anymore as my blood sugar levels are now so low when they were so high when, so high when I was in the hospital. I couldn't have done this without my incredible mother, who has been my rock, my dear friends, and they know who they are, and the will to carry on. I have been clean from abusing painkillers for nearly 10 years now, and every day just striving to be better. If I have one thing to say, it's that there's a better way to live. Thank you for, thank you for listening to my story. Much love. And I hope this helps even just one person. Thanks.